So in high school or first year university, chemistry, when we talk about chemical kinetics and we study the rate of a reaction, generally what we're doing is we're going to check out the concentration change in a reaction for products and reactants, but mostly for the reactants, uh, versus an amount of time. So there's your reaction rate, concentration versus time. So let's take an example here and just let me break it down for you and show you what we'd be studying and how we're going to actually come up with a formula that's going to be able to describe a rate of a reaction. So we've got a reaction here, so 2NO2s, it, that's a gas at room temperature, and it's going to form 2NO gases plus O2 gas. And so this reaction is taking place, oh, let's say in a reaction vessel, so we've got it in a closed system so we can measure certain changes. Well, let's take a look at what's going to happen when the reaction proceeds with an initial concentration of NO2 that's present and no NO and O2 initially present, and then we allow the reaction to take place over time. So what's going to occur? Well, it's pretty obvious that if the reaction proceeds from left to right, we're going to get a concentration change and a decreasing concentration of NO2 and an increase in the NO, and the increase is going to be identical to the decrease because of the coefficients in front, right? And then we're also going to be able to form oxygen, but in half the amount that we do of the NO, uh, NO gas here. So what I've tried to do in this graph here is express a decrease in concentration of the NO2 and increases in NO and O2 concentrations in a closed system until we get to a point where there's equilibrium established, where the change in concentration over time um, uh, is zero. <laughs> okay, so we look at this and we say, okay, we've got a decrease in concentration here, an increase here, and an increase here. So how could we measure the rate of this reaction? Well, we could do it one of three ways, really, uh, in terms of concentration and time. We could say, well, the rate of this reaction is equal to the change in the concentration of the NO2, and we put a negative in front because it's decreasing in concentration. So the rate of this reaction could equal the decrease in the change in concentration of the NO2 over a change in time, a change in time, a time period, right? But that's also going to be equal to the rate of the increase in the concentration or the accumulation of or the change in concentration of the NO over time. And of course, because this is going to be formed in half the amount, the rate of production of this, if we're making it equal to the rate of production of, of the NO gas here, then it's going to have to be multiplied by 2 in terms of its uh, concentration in time here, so we can get the rate of the oxygen that's produced. If we multiply it by 2, that rate will then equal the rate of this production here. So that's a way of describing the rate of change here for this reaction, right? In three different ways. Now, here's what we're going to do in, in this unit of study. We're going to concentrate not on the products here being formed, but we're going to concentrate on the reactants and their decomposition. So there's a way to express. Now, well, let, me, let me go back and just say, if I were to ask for what is the rate of decrease of the NO2 at any given point, well, you could actually do this to be able to calculate what we call the instantaneous rate. You could actually draw a line, whatever point you want. If you say, okay, at this time, what is the rate of decrease here? Well, if you drew a line, a straight line that was tangent to the curve, and then you did the change in the y-axis versus the change in the x-axis quantities, that gives you the, the, the rate of change at that particular point, that instantaneous point. A line tangent to the curve will help you to calculate that. But here's the thing. If you wanted to know, not just the instantaneous rate, but really what is going to be the rate of reaction at any given point here, and what would, it, what would an equation be that would express that? Wow, this is a curved line and not a straight line, so how do you do that? You use calculus. Now here's the thing, you're going to say, I don't want to use calculus! Okay, so what we do in chemistry is we come up with a formula that's kind of calculus based, that's going to be able to help us to determine the concentrations or the rates at any given point. Here's how it works. We're going to take always the reactant and we are going to put it in concentration brackets and we're going to write this rate equals K. Now that's a lowercase k. 
rate equals K times the concentration of the NO to a certain power. That actually will express, and a, it's a formula that we can utilize to be able to calculate the rate of reaction at any given concentration at a particular temperature. This is a temperature specific type of equation. So the rate of the reaction is going to equal K, which is going to be called a rate constant. I'm going to show you how to derive that and the units for that too times the concentration of the NO, but that N there is the power to which that concentration is taken. It's called the order of the reactant or the order of the reaction. And that is going to be, for our intents and purposes, a whole number. So it can be 0, 1, 2, and you know what? Generally, that's all it's ever going to be, 0 or a 1 or a 2 in introductory type of chemistry kinetics. So we're going to utilize this formula, and coming up right now, I'm going to do a question where that formula is going to help us to determine uh, what the uh, order is for a reaction.